What's your name? I'm Jawar Aline. And you're based in London? I'm or? based in London, yeah. Uh -huh. Take me through your collection. What it's so, about. How many years are you designing? I've been designing since I was 16, but the brand officially launched in 2020, um, in the year of COVID. Oh, year. God. Um, a lot of the work that we do is exploring circularity, deconstruction, reconstruction, and drape work coming from the Caribbean as well. There's this sort of running theory of pirate cultures and identities running throughout the collection as well. Um, so this is one of the pieces from the previous show. Um, so everything's done by hand, yeah, obviously. For the most part, everything is done by hand, yeah. Nice. Very light. Very light. Very light. So you bought a stock of safety pins. <laughs> <laughs> I can never keep them in stock. Yeah. Nice. So is this the first showroom since yeah, the, first the rest showroom. was online, I guess? Yeah, precisely. Nice. So it's no gender. Yeah, for the most part, yeah. It's, we, the women's wear is very specific, but um, everything else kind of moves throughout. Mm -hmm. um, what is that multicolor one, the red? It's quite interesting. Very nice. So it's like no sewing, it's just pins. For the most part, yeah. I think it's, it's sewn in parts where it needs to be. It's sewn at the mm -hmm. colors, sewn at the sleeves. Um, but everything is just really exploring how you create garments by just drape work alone. Mm -hmm. But then we also have some pieces that are kind of more fully constructed as well. So you grew up in London also? No, I grew up in, I grew up between Jamaica and the Cayman Islands. Ah. Um, and when did you move to London for school? I moved to London in 2012 for school, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I essentially graduated from all of school in 2020, at the beginning of 2020. Okay. Yeah. So you just launched right into it. Well, it was COVID. What else were yeah. you going to do? Yeah. Um, but, I mean, you, you could have worked for someone else. Well, I've worked. I've worked. I've been, um, I've worked in the industry. I was managing a design studio, Peter Pilato, for a few years. Ah. So I learned pattern cutting, how to construct. Are they still in business, Peter Pilato? Um, no, they closed, like, right, right. before the pandemic. Right. Um, so I but, know them from when they were in school. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Um, so I was working there. For, I worked there for six years. Um, oh, really? Before that, I also started a modeling agency um, in London. I, are you a model also? No, no, no. Could be, easily. Could be. <laughs> these are great, these trousers. Thank you. This, uh, they're also from the collection as well, actually. Yeah, I mean, I can tell. <laughs> I mean, so is a sweatshirt, I guess. Yeah, and then we have this uh, t-shirt underneath as well. Wow, that's great. Wow. Um, so you're very ambitious. You had a modeling agency also. Yeah, I mean, you do what you do. We felt like we needed to do that and we did it and it was successful. And I think I learned actually a lot from doing that. Mm -hmm. But I've been working a lot in the industry in, in London. You can't just go to school. You have to work. You have to mm -hmm. intern here, intern there, work on different shoots, do, you, do other projects on the side. Um, yeah, which I guess is where this sort of rebellious way of thinking about design and creating a fashion company comes from because mm -hmm. I've worked in so many different places and I'm coming from a background that's really diverse in a sense. Which is great. No, I believe you want to do something, you just do it. Mm, exactly. It's, yeah. Exactly. What else did I miss over here? So we've got some more of our t deconstructed tailoring pieces. Um, mm -hmm. These cropped jackets actually are really popular. Because yeah. I think what people find is that most jackets that exist, the length just doesn't really match with how we actually wear. Um, Do you want to try one on? Sure. Very sexy.
great. Looks great. So you wear things out and people say, who designed that work and I get it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's clear. But also, I think I am the, the customer, really. I think yeah. emotionally, I'm the one that really connects a lot with the stories and the histories and the pirate culture. And I think if I'm not, if I'm not in the garments myself, it's really hard to understand how a customer can also be a part of that world. I agree. I, I hate it when designers don't wear their own clothes. I have a real problem with that. But no, I mean, it's very coherent. Nice. You, the look, the trousers. The trousers are great. So what else do we have here? We have those t-shirts as well. Mm -hmm. Our series of one-off t-shirts that we make and we drop on our web shop quite frequently every two weeks actually those so are, are how do people buy your clothes on my web shop and what's the name exactly can you spell it out j-a-w-a-r-a-a-l-l-e-y-n-e shop.com okay shop.com what is this piece so that is a bag from our most recent collection leather scraps bag um, mm -hmm. which is coming out next year. Um, these pieces are, we work with a, Syri a collective of Syrian refugees who um, are based in Lebanon, who crochet for us. So Great. we find that they have an amazing, amazing, like really intricate handwork. So they're crocheting shapes that then we turn into objects. A lot of bags and a lot of hats, essentially. How did you get to them um a friend of mine was um a part of the collective that started that kind of started when they moved to to, to into lebanon um and she found that actually a lot of refugees they when they when you go when you're this relocated dislocated whatever um you don't have the possibility of creating a, an economy a, an economy for yourself so mm -hmm. This friend of mine started this collective and I just knew about the fact that she actually did that and then I literally just went to them directly. Which is great. It's good to do social causes. And these are belts or what is so these? So these are belts and scarves from our most recent collection as well. Mm -hmm. So do you sell it like limited editions of things except for the t-shirts? Yes, for the, for the most part. Now we're actually going into production, but we wanted to keep things quite limited, quite straightforward, also so that we can just go directly to the consumer as well. I think that's mm -hmm. very important. Um, but now we've sort of streamlined the styles that we have that actually can be produced, um, mm -hmm. but still keeping that feeling of something that's individually made and, and has a touch of the hand to it as well. Um, these are some other ones of our, the jeans that we have. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting shape. And so they're like mid-calf? Yeah. And it's, yeah, the construction's interesting. Cool. Interesting on the le legs are open or there's a piece underneath it. Do you see skin through here? No. Um, you have fabric. fabric. Yeah. And what's this white piece? So this white piece Shirt. is a trouser as well. Oh, it's a trouser. Light trouser. Oh, they're great. They rolled at the waist. It's great. Super sensual on mm, these pieces. Exactly, exactly, exactly. It's really touching on that lightness and that sensuality that I find is sometimes actually missing in design. Mm -hmm. um, these are some shorts that we have. They're all nice shapes. Mm. Well, again, it's, it's exploring drape work and it's exploring this sensitivity in the way that fabric just falls and moves in and of itself. So we do that within the women's range with jersey styles. And when we're looking at denim and t-shirts as well, the theory kind of carries on. Mm -hmm. Nice. These are more 
commercial pieces. I like it. It's very you. I mean, I don't know you, but it's very you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Great. Thank you. Did I miss this? This is the draped dresses. Which are a little bit hard to see on the... On this. But I'm going to give you my uh, contact and you can send me JPEGs. Yes, absolutely. Can you hold it up a bit? Yeah. Very nice. No pins. A couple pins. A couple pins. A <laughs> couple pins. The thing is, pin, pins aren't everywhere the way they need to be mm -hmm. in order to express. Nice. So you drape it on an actual person? Yeah, I drape it on myself a lot. Yeah, you can tell. There's always such a difference between mm -hmm. draping it on a human and mm -hmm. draping mm -hmm. it on a... On a stand, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I usually am working a lot. The way that I drape is kind of a little bit of a performance, to be honest. Um, I'm draping a lot on myself. Um, also, because a mannequin doesn't really have the body parts where they need to be in order for you to really understand how a drape should fall over the over the, the butt or over the boobs, for instance. Um, yeah. Nice. See the exhibition called Black Indian? No, where was it? Just that? opened at the K Brandley. I haven't. It's actually American right. Indians. Mardi Gras, New Orleans. I need to check that out. Actually. It's great. Just opened. And they have lots of costumes and right. films. Right. And I think right. you'd like it. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Gonna 